This amazing video is brought to you by the number one website builder Squarespace. The Acolyte trailer is here and should we be excited? It doesn't make sense. Like many people who have struggled through the Disney Star Wars journey, the trailers for the Disney content have been quite the roller coaster. because even though I've hated the recent ones, you can't win all we want. I have to admit, back in 2015 when my robot parts were being used as a toll booth, and the Force Awakens trailer hit, it hit me right in the heart. There has been an awakening. Have you felt it? First the teaser trailer and then the official trailer with Han and Chewie dropped and I was transported back to being a child. We're home. I must have watched that trailer 20 times in a row and every time I'd get a little tear in my eye. I thought, Star Wars is coming back and it looked incredible. Nothing will stand in our way. Now hindsight is a wonderful thing, but to this day I can still watch those trailers and remember that initial exciting feeling. Well I don't think I'll ever be feeling that way again when it comes to Star Wars. Which brings us to the latest Star Wars trailer, The Acolyte. Now before we start I have to point out I have a huge problem with the creator of The Acolyte, the very fake and spongy looking Leslie Headland, who always sounds like the drunk annoying friend everyone has, that has to exaggerate every story. Star Wars saved my life. Who was the former personal assistant of Harvey Weinstein? Every personal assistant of Harvey Weinstein has stated they knew what type of person he was and what he was up to, all of them except Leslie Headland. Somehow, she was the only person in Hollywood who didn't know the truth about Harvey Weinstein. Quite amazing. Congratulations, you five ladies no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein. And it's weird because he promised some of his other personal assistants flourishing careers in Hollywood if they let him indulge in his weird sexual requests. He was clear about what what he was looking for so if i did this just one thrust and it would all be over that i would then you know enjoy a, a rich and fulfilling career in film but i'm sure it's just a coincidence that leslie headland has been given the keys to one of hollywood's biggest franchises at hollywood's biggest studio with all the experience she has Kathleen Kennedy, whose dream was to always work with Roman Polanski, yes, that Roman Polanski, has decided to take Leslie under her wing because it's just one big group of weirdos in Hollywood. Goes for Roman Polanski. For the pianist. And if you want more background on Kathleen Kennedy's fascination with Roman Polanski, there is this wonderful video you can watch. And on top of that, if you want more background on Leslie Headland and Harvey Weinstein's relationship, there's another amazing video for you. Now, the idea of the Acolyte is something I've been asking for for a long time. No, that's not constipated monkey movies. To get away from a tight little time frame where all the live action Star Wars takes place. Yes, they should have moved away from the Skywalker saga a long time ago. We would have got a lot less damage to George's original work that way. My duty is to the boy. What about your duty to his sister? The Acolyte is set at the end of the High Republic era, approximately 100 years before Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Well, that's disappointing. It's only like three, maybe four generations before Phantom Menace. We might meet Shmi Skywalker's grandpa, for God's sake. I was hoping they were going to be jumping a thousand years to get away from any connection to those original movies. That would have had me excited. Well, come on, excited's probably a stretch. But I may have had some hope. Who am I kidding? All hope is gone. Anyway, we should press play on the trailer. Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. Tell me what comes into your mind. I see fire. So we start with bloody more of the same. Another back at the Jedi Temple kids Jedi training scene. Oh Christ. Are we trying the Reva backstory again? Are they going to try and make her story make sense this time? I see fire. That's Reva. Hang on. And people are hunting Jedi. Christ, this is the Obi-Wan show all over again. Tell me what comes into your mind. I am sure the hacks working at Lucasfilm don't understand the public's relationship with the prequels because they seem to look at all the memes for inspiration. Easily one of the biggest cringe moments from the prequels is the scene where Yoda's teaching the younglings. <laughs> the idea of Anakin being too old to begin training is a cool idea. It conveys the feeling that being a Jedi is really hard and takes a lot of years to achieve. But seeing that idea in action, a bunch of young kids wildly swinging deadly lightsabers around, all looking as stiff as boards, well, that makes the training kids look ridiculous. Some things are better left to the imagination. Well, Disney doesn't understand that. We keep going back to the Jedi Temple for kids' Jedi training scenes. And it's not just kids. We have to watch bloody Grogu not only get trained to be a Jedi, but also trained to be a Mandalorian. What a joke. We then get a nice surprise in this trailer with the appearance of Carrie Ann Moss as a Jedi. The trailer then just turns into the Matrix. The 
Now I would like to say the creators of this show have a limited imagination by hiring Carrie Ann Moss to play her Trinity character again, but that would be a bit hypocritical because I'd be all on board for a Keanu Reeves Jedi movie. Bring that on. Maybe if Carrie Ann Moss's character doesn't make us want to smash our TVs, then maybe in the future we could have a Trinity and Neo Star Wars movie. I know, they brought them back together for Matrix 4, and that was dog shit. But a robot has to dream. Now, even though the fight scene is literally copying a 25-year-old film, it looks a far sight better than any of the fight scenes we've had up to now in the Disney Star Wars. It looks like it was choreographed by an actual fight choreographer that was good at their job, which is quite the surprise after what we've had to endure. A quick detour to help you make your dreams come true. Everyone wants the perfect life by turning their talents or ideas into their full-time moneymaker. But don't let it just be a dream. Live like me and make it a reality. Get those ideas and talents out to the world with an amazing website from Squarespace. Now you know nothing is more important than a first impression. And with Squarespace, you can have a killer first impression with a professionally designed website that you can easily manage and edit yourself, which means it won't cost you a fortune. And best of all, your website can be up and running within hours. First sign up for a free trial, choose from Squarespace's selection of professionally designed templates, then make it your own with the ease of drag and drop designing using their amazing custom tool Fluid Engine. And if you have a product, easily set up a store to sell directly to your customers. If digital content is your thing, Squarespace now has a members area where you can monetize your content right on your own website. So no greedy middleman taking a chunk of your profits. Squarespace also provides secure payments and client invoicing, so you can just about run your whole business straight from your website. Plus, if you have a great idea for a course you want to teach, Squarespace lets you set up online courses with multimedia lessons, progress tracking, and flexible pricing. So once you have your courses set up, you can be making money 24-7. And nothing beats making cash while you're asleep. Head over to squarespace.com slash robothead and try Squarespace today for free. And then, when it's your time to take off, use the code robothead and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Use the link below. Go to Squarespace today and get you and your ideas out to the world. Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. We then get to visit another village again. It's sad that Star Wars has lost its distinctive look and virtually every planet now looks the same. Everything is so generic and depressing. From what we've seen so far, the Acolyte looks like it belongs in the Zack Snyder Rebel Moon universe more than the George Lucas Star Wars universe, which is not a good thing because Zack Snyder films look like cancer. I'm also bored by this artistic decision to make earthly cultural hairstyles and alien design. It seems that the Reaver actress pushing to include her dreads, which for some reason was important to her to have, well, seems that that became the go-to for Lucasfilm. Either that or the Rasta look really took off in the Star Wars universe. And it doesn't look good on everyone. So what's your character's name? Uh-huh, not giving it. Um, I am a Jedi Knight, I can tell you that. Sure. I got some really cool hair, I can tell you that. Sure. So mm -hmm. one of the things... Uh, no. The only people who find that hair cool are modern feminists. It doesn't make sense. Oh, I can just see this Jedi back at the Jedi Academy hair salon having his designer dreadlocks put in. Come on, Lucasfilm design team. Be brave. Don't just do dreads. Bring back the Jerry Curl. And give the Jerry Curl to the Wookiee. I heard there was a Wookiee in this show and I'm surprised not to see more of him in the trailer. Lucasfilm seems to think that after Solo, a Star Wars story bombed, that we don't like Wookiees. We love Wookiees. We just don't like it when they are turned into Ray's Uber driver. So show us the Wookiee doing something exciting. <laughs> What happened? I sensed darkness. There was some fine force hand acting there. This guy definitely didn't go to the Reaver School of Acting, so that's got to be an improvement. Oh, this show really is a United Colors of Benetton ad come to life. You know, the ads with every different color under the rainbow. A group of people look like they would never be in the same room together. And what's with the lack of droids? First it was the aliens that was pared down, and now they're getting rid of the droids. I know it's just the trailer, so calm down. This isn't about good or bad. This is about power. And who is allowed to use it? What is that? Now, I saw online some over-the-top reactions to the lightsaber cutting through the tree scene. People were reacting like we'd finally witnessed something new in Star Wars. But, like everything in this trailer, we have also seen that before. In Rey's wonderful training scene in The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Those poor shills having to pretend that everything is new and exciting all the time. It must get tiring. Yeah. But then again, I don't think they have any shame. You see this? Oh, you're like twins. Woohoo! This is Aerie. Maybe we 
we do look a little like each other. More dreadlocks. I'm not saying that Leslie Headland is a racist, but why does every black person automatically get dreadlocks? Seems a bit cliched. And again, they could have the jerry curl. When I first saw this trailer, I didn't realise that all the Jedi here were getting pushed back. I thought it was all the Jedi taking off with Jedi super speed. Which I thought was a brilliant idea. For some reason, we hadn't seen that since Phantom Menace, so I was rather excited. But no, that's not what's happening at all. And we finish off with the Fellowship Ring for some unknown reason. What is that? So it will be interesting to see how this show handles the Sith situation, seeing as the prequels clearly set up that the Sith had not been seen for a millennia. Was the Sith Lord impossible? The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. Will the writers of this show be clever how they handle the Sith situation? It's not easy to say Sith situation. As to not break canon. <laughs> <laughs> of course they won't. This is Disney folks. They love breaking canon. Somehow Palpatine returned. This trailer ticks off all the right words. Balance. Darkness. Power. Jedi. It's all very bland. Balance. Darkness. Jedi. And worst of all, we've seen it all before. All the Disney shows now look the same. Every Star Wars show looks like it could be set at the same time. So we've got another trailer that gives very little away and it's just relying on the words Star Wars in the title. Why are they always so gutless with their trailers? Is the vagueness an ominous brown note score? A shortcut to create a sense of mystery? Or is it like Ahsoka and just trying to cover up what's going to be a very empty story that could be told in 60 minutes but is for some reason going to be stretched over eight episodes? Well, we'll just have to watch it to find out. Star Wars saved my life. Like... <laughs>